Hi there. Thank you for joining me today in our series in 1 Corinthians. Today we are in chapter 10. We're going to do from verse 1 to verse 3. Here Paul is talking about baptism. And it is such a pleasure for me to bring this message to you because it is such a passion in my heart to understand what baptism really is. Oftentimes it's preached and watered down to being insignificant. But if you listen to this today, you're going to find out that it's very important that we do this and it's very significant for our life and it's very significant for the journey that we are on with the Lord. So come and let's find out how to continue on this journey so that we can reach the destiny that God has for us. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in 1 Corinthians today. We are in chapter 10, verse 1. Paul is kind of going through different subjects here, and we're kind of starting a whole new subject here in chapter 10, so we won't review what went on in chapter 9. We'll just jump right into our study here. In verse 1, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud, and that they passed through the sea. They were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. This is a very powerful scripture here, and one that I want to spend a little bit of time on, because oftentimes we misunderstand what baptism is all about. And I've heard it preached so many times that baptism is just an outward sign of what already goes on in our heart. Now, that is true to an extent, and that certainly got truth in it, but there's more to it than just that. That's, it's not limited to that. The problem with preaching a message like that, it doesn't show us the necessity of baptism. It doesn't show us how important baptism is. It shows us that we can either take it or not take it, whether we want to show an expression. And I have talked to a number of people over the years who refuse to be baptized because they say, if it's just an outward show of what the Lord has done in my heart, I don't need that outward show. I don't care about that outward show. I don't, it doesn't, it's not something that I need to do. But there's a lot more to it. And in order to understand this, we have to understand about the children of Israel. Now, the children of Israel were in bondage for 420 years in Egypt. And they came out of bondage on the day of the Passover. The Passover was when the death angel went over the land and killed all the firstborn of Egypt. But more importantly, it was the day that the Lord provided through the sacrifice of a lamb and the blood on the doorposts and the lintel of the house, he provided a way that when the death angel went over the land, he would not touch anybody who was under the blood. Now this, of course, is an absolute foreshadowing of Jesus dying on the cross. It's an absolute foreshadowing of what the Lord has done for us. So it's good for us to understand that. In order to understand exactly what happens here through this thing, we need to understand the purposes that God has for us. The purpose that God has for us is not to come to salvation so that we can go to heaven. Now, again, I've said this many times and I'll say it again. It's true, we do go to heaven if we accept the Lord. That's one of the results. But the more important thing that the Lord has for us the more important thing that he wants is for us to walk in intimate relationship with him. It is a journey that we start when we are saved. It's an eternal journey. It's a journey that we start to walk with and where we grow in intimacy with the Lord as we go down this journey. In fact, when the children of Israel were eating the Passover lamb, which represented Christ, they had to take in all of it, the head, the guts, everything inside, they had to eat the whole thing, but they had to eat it with their coats on, their staff in their hand, ready to go, ready to leave on a journey. This is to signify that this is the beginning. They're going to start a journey here. For us, 
when we come to the Lord and we accept the Lord, it's the same thing as the children of Israel finishing that Passover meal and then starting out the door on their way to freedom. So this is the same thing for us. In this story, the children of Israel started out and they were walking down this valley with a mountain range on one side and another one on the other side. And they came to the Red Sea and the Red Sea was in front of them. So now they were kind of trapped because the, the Egyptian army was coming behind them. They couldn't go to the right or the left because of the mountains that were there. And the Red Sea was sitting right in front of them. And they were confused as to what's going on. And they started to grumble against Moses. Why have you brought us to this place? Well, Moses cried out to God and God said, Oh, I gave you the power. I gave you a staff in your hand. Lay it out over the water. So Moses laid it over the water and the water parted. And the children of Israel, two, two million plus children, went through there. And when they reached the other side, the Egyptians seen that they were able to pass through the water, so they thought they could too. So with their chariots and horses and everything, they went in and they started crossing over. And when they got halfway over and the last Israelite got under the water, the water closed in and it killed all the Egyptians. And the Egyptians were never an issue with the children of Israel after that. Let me just clarify, he didn't kill all Egyptians, he killed all the army that was there. So this, as Paul is saying here, is a form of baptism. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the facts, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud that passed through the sea. This is what he's talking about. And they were baptized into Moses. The cloud was the pillar of cloud they had. It was the Holy Spirit. It represents the Holy Spirit. It, during the day, it was a pillar of cloud that they could see that they would follow. At night, it was a pillar of fire that gave light to the camp that they could also follow if they were traveling at night. This pillar of cloud, because we know cloud contains water, and the water on each side going through was a type of baptism. If we look at what happened in that place and time in reality, we can get a fuller understanding of what baptism really means to us. So let's break this down and let's have a look at it. So the, we are the children of Israel. We decide to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We come under the blood of the cross. We accept Jesus into our life. Now we start this journey. And we come to a place where we, we have this Red Sea here. The world is coming behind us because Egypt is typed by the world. Egypt represents the world. The world is coming behind the uh, Israelites to bring them back into captivity. Because remember, here's two million working men who were their slaves. They were the ones that were doing all the labor in Egypt. If they go free, who's going to do all the labor, right? So these guys were, were coming to bring them back into captivity. The world always desires to bring us back into captivity. Once we've come under the blood, once we've eaten of the Lord, and we start our journey, the devil and the world are going to try everything to pull us back. I often use this example. It's like having a fish hook on your collar with a big long line, and they're trying to reel you back in. They're trying to pull you back into the world with temptations and many other things. Now, where the children of Israel came to the water in the Red Sea and they trusted God, God made a way for them to go through that water. And in the end, the Egyptians went and the water closed on them and it separated the world from them. The world could no longer have any control with them. And for us, when we go through the waters of baptism, it's like that line is being cut that the world no longer has a right to claim us as their own and try to draw us back. Now, that does not mean we don't sin. That does not mean that the devil is not going to bring temptation to, to us. But there's an ownership thing that happens there that severs that control that the world has with us. And of course, the scripture tells us very clearly in Romans that when we are baptized, we identify with the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Not only are we identifying with what happened in our heart, not only is it an outward show, but it's also a separation of the world from us. Now, if you go through the story of the children of Israel and you follow their journey, there's many opportunities in that time where we can get stuck in our journey. 
And we do as Christians. We oftentimes get stuck in our journey. And sometimes the Lord will let us sit there for a long time until we finally learn what he is trying to teach us and then we can continue on our journey. And this is one of the major hurdles that the, the new believers come to very quickly because if your understanding is that baptism is merely an outward show of what's in your heart and you say, well, I really don't need to do that. I really don't need to go through that outward show. Then you are going to be stuck on the Egyptian side of the Red Sea. And the world is going to continually be pulling at you, continually trying to bring you back into captivity because you got stuck in your journey because you refuse to go across the Red Sea. You refuse to go through baptism to sever that connection between the world and yourself. They still feel that they have a legal right to pull you back into captivity. You were theirs, you were their slave. They want you back into captivity again, even though you have been free. By refusing to go through those waters, you put yourself in a very difficult situation. And the other thing that you do is you stop yourself on your journey. Your journey comes to an end there. there. There's a pause in your journey. It doesn't come to an end because once you do it, you can continue. But if you never go through those waters of baptism, you're never going to go beyond that point. Now, let me clarify this. This does not determine your salvation or not your salvation. Your salvation is determined at Passover. By coming under the blood of the Lamb and by taking Jesus into you, you are saved. Oftentimes what we don't understand is there's more than one salvation. Now, I know for a lot of you, red flags just went up right there when I said that, that there's more than one salvation. But hear me out, listen to me. There's salvation from death, and that's what happened at Passover. That's what happens when we come under the cross. When we apply the blood of Jesus to us, when we take Jesus into us, the death angel cannot touch us anymore. We have started our eternal life. We are a new creation. God is abiding in us, and we have been saved from the death angel. Now, when they came to the Red Sea, and they went across the Red Sea, then there was a second salvation there where they were saved from the world. It didn't change the status of their relationship with God. They were already Christians. They were already children of God, but it disconnected their connection from the world. They were saved from the world, as we can say. So the children of Israel, when they went across the sea and the Egyptian army came after them and the water closed in on them, the Egyptian army was never a situation for them again. All the 40 years they were in the wilderness, it would the Egyptians were never in, written in the story after that because they were separated from them. They had been saved from that situation of them trying to bring him back into captivity. Never again could they be brought back into captivity. But if we refuse to go across the Red Sea, then we're still in Egypt. We're still in our land of bondage. And as long as we sit in that land of bondage, we are under threat to be pulled back in to the world. We're under threat to be pulled back into bondage again. It just really helps us a lot if we can do this. Not only that, once we cross that Red Sea, once we go through baptism, we're ready to continue our journey until the next thing comes along. And there are many things, and we're not going to go into all that today. That's a lesson to go through. We'd be here for many, many weeks going through that. This is important for us to understand. Baptism has a point. And just as they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and the sea, did it mean they didn't sin? No, they did. Did it mean that they were just happy and content all the time? No, they grumbled all the time against Moses. Shortly after they went there, they had no water. I mean, there was there was two million men, and there was women and children, and there was flocks and, and herds and whatnot. They had no water, and they were all going to die of thirst. It's one thing to have one or two people thirsty. You can give them a couple glasses of water each, and they're fine. But when you have that many, I mean, you need a river, right? <laughs> Remember, there is the salvation where we come under the blood of the Lamb and we take the Lamb in us. 
That is the salvation that most of us are talking about. That's where a, pe a person becomes a new creation. That's the salvation where we accept Jesus and the old is gone and the new has come. And it is the beginning of our journey. Now, this is one of the reasons I really don't like the gospel being presented as accept Jesus so that you can go to heaven. Because oftentimes what happens is then we get stuck right there in our Passover house. We get stuck there because we've accepted Jesus, we've come under the blood, we, we have experienced his salvation, and we say, okay, I don't need anything more. I don't need, I need, everything's done, everything's complete. Now, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. But there's so much more than that. There's a journey. There's a promised land at the end. There's a promised land that God's desire is for us all to enter into. There's a destiny for every one of us that God has for us. But in order to go that destiny, there's a traveling that needs to happen. You need to go through Egypt to the Red Sea. You need to cross the Red Sea. You need to go to Mount Sinai and learn about God and how to build a relationship with Him. And then from Mount Sinai, you need to travel through the wilderness to get to the Jordan so that you can cross over the Jordan and enter into the Promised Land. Now let me say this. Crossing over the Jordan and entering into the Promised Land is not going to heaven. It's not going to heaven. It's walking into the destiny that God has for you. Just like the children of Israel. Their destiny was to go to the promised land. Out of two million men that left Egypt, only two received their destiny because the others refused to walk in intimacy with God. If Had they walked in intimacy with God, like Caleb and Joshua did, then they too could have entered the promised land. But they didn't. Now, when they got to the promised land, they were fulfilling then the calling that God had for them. They were fulfilling what God was doing through them. And so this is our desire. This is what we want to work through. So it's very important for us to understand that we need to follow the steps that are necessary for the journey that is set before us so that we can do the things that God is calling us to do that we can fulfill the destiny he has for us, that we can work and walking in the intimacy he has for us. Well, thank you for joining me today. I think this will be a blessing for you. I hope it helps you on your journey as you walk with the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing for us all the time. We thank you that you are always with us and that you never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Father, for the example we have of Moses and the children of Israel and how we can be separated from the world. Father, for those who are struggling in this, Lord, I pray that this uh, lesson might be an insight to them, that they might be baptized so that they can continue on their journey to eventually reach their promised land, the destiny that you have for each and every one of them. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share your word and to share your gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Remember, God loves you so much that he put this journey and he put this plan in place for each and every one of us. He loves you and so do I. Take us home, girls.